This is Pastor Lupe Sanchez, uh, Jesus Lord Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. And uh, we're at 3800 Hopper Road. Good chance to come on by and visit us on Wednesday, 7.30 when this uh, stinking virus ends. We're going to be in 1 Thessalonians 4.15. For this I say unto you, the word of the Lord, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. Then in Christ shall rise first, in which we are alive to remain, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Uh, these words are supposed to be comforting. Why? Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back, and uh, comfort means uh, relief from pain, ease, rest, moderate pleasure after pain, and uh, relief from distress of mind, ease, quiet. And uh, In America, you need that now. We need, as Christians, some comfort, because folks are going looney tunes. We've got division in America. You got the left, you got the right, you got the crazies. I mean, uh, in the last few days, somebody shot an eight-year-old little girl. Shot a little eight-year-old little girl. I'm talking about this country's crazy. When you shoot a little eight-year-old girl, you're just plain crazy. We got rape and murder, divorce, uh, Abortion, we get the virus, 133,000 so far in America. Then I compare to what uh, the other statistics are that nobody wants to talk about. Heart disease, you know, number one, 17 million. Cancer, 10 million. Respiratory disease, 4 million. Lower respiratory, 2.5. Uh, let's get some good numbers. Diabetes, 1.37. Liver disease, 1.32. Kidney disease, 1.23. We're still not close to the virus. Suicide even beats it, 954,000. Let's get to a number that we can find that's close. Uh, drug use, 166,000. All we need is another 20,000 more people to die, and it will catch up to people that are overdosing on drugs. Thank you, God bless you, hallelujah. 144,000. The flu kills more people than that. But then I'll say stuff like that. I mean, uh, uh, let me give you some bad news first. We'll start with the bad news. And the bad news is no matter how hard you eat right, no matter how much rest you get, no matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you read your Bible, no matter how much you go to church, no matter how much you give, time, talent, treasure, I'm sorry, you're going to die. You're going to die. And you're going to need some comfort. You need comfort in words. Uh, when things get bad, and what's more comforting than the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back, and I hope he comes back today, amen. One man said, uh, my grandpa used to uh, go on the tall buildings downtown. He said he'd put that steel up there. Everybody thought he was crazy. He said he never, he never died while he was up there pulling them high-rise buildings up. He said, but he got out of his house one day, walked up towards his car, parked on the side, the car lost control, and he died. He said, when it's time to go, it's time to go. I think that's what the Bible says. Uh, well, you have to check, double check that. Uh, uh, and you're going to need some cover that works. Because in times of trouble, you're in the wrong place, somebody may just try to kill you. In times of uncertainty, we got a deficit. Trillions of dollars. And all of a sudden, we got a coin shortage. Well, you know, it, I guess so with the government. This is my conspiracy theory. When the government 
is uh, melting all the coins. When the government's melting all the coins, getting us ready for a cashless society, I believe the Lord's fixing to come back. Every once in a while, you need comfort and words. What's more comfort than Jesus is coming back? Even in sin, you need comfort. I mean, even when you sin, you need comfort. Uh, in Samuel 12, 1, the Lord sent Nathan the prophet unto David. And uh, he gave him a little story about uh, two men come to town, and they were rich, and, and the rich man told the poor man, go get your little sheep, your little the sheep that you got, and we're going to serve it up to these two men. And David got all mad, and he said, uh, he going out to, he was, anger was greatly kindled against the man. That's 12 5. And uh, he's going to restore the lamb. He's going to die. And uh, I'm going to have no pity on him. And in verse 7, Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. He said, I know that you came, gave me master's house, master's wife, gave the house of Israel, Judah. It had been too little. Whatever more to give it unto thee, such and such thing. All David had to do was ask. He said, but the, uh, he said, you kill Uriah, the Hittite. You took his wife. He said, now the sword's ain't never going to leave your house. Ain't never going to leave your house. I'm going to raise evil up against you. I'll take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And uh, what you did in secret, he said, I'm going to let all Israel see. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned. And Nathan said, uh, the Lord also put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit by this deed thou hast given great occasion for the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And the child that is born to thee shall surely die. Nathan left. And the Lord struck the child, Uriah's wife, barren of David. He was very sick. David, therefore, began to fast. A good dad started fasting for his child. He started fasting, started praying, refused to eat. And uh, he said, but, uh, the servants, when the baby finally died, the child died. They said, what are we going to say? And when David heard him whispering, he says, the child dead? And uh, they said, yes, the child's dead. He anointed himself, changed his apparel, worshiped the Lord, ate bread. His servants, they didn't understand it. He said, well, when the child was yet alive, I, I fasted and I wept. He said, uh, who can tell whether God will be gracious unto me the child may live? Now he is dead, therefore why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I should go to him and he shall not, and he shall not return to me. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. He killed Uriah, her husband. He thought everything was right. Went to the temple, worshiped God, said amen, hallelujah, you're right preacher. He thought he was right with God. Said a little prayer. No. No. You know you can deceive yourself and think everything's right with you and God and it's not. So God sent this bold preacher by the name of Nathan to tell him the story. Brother Jack used to do that, Brother Jack would. He'd speak to you in stories. You'd ask him a question, he'd tell you a story. Nathan said, you're the man. You committed adultery, you killed a man, killed her husband, took his wife. All you had to do is ask. I would have gave you. You want ten more wives? I would have gave you ten more. You want more money? I would have gave you more money. You want another palace? I would have gave you another palace. You want more men? You want more land? More cattle? Whatever you want. All you had to do is ask. But you didn't ask. So the punishment is the sword's never going to leave your house. And the child's going to die. 
David was a good repenter. He got right with God right there and then when that preacher showed up. He knew he was wrong. He fasted. Tried to get a hold of God. But God had already made up his mind. The child was going to die. And David comforted Bathsheba. And uh, he went in there and lay with her and she bare a son and he called his name Solomon and the Lord loved him. David comforted Bathsheba. And all this mess. I can imagine Bathsheba going, why did I go on that roof and take a bath while men were out there looking? While the king was looking? Why? Why? I'm pretty sure she blamed herself. And David had to comfort his wife. He had to strengthen, console, encourage. And uh, I don't think David started the blame game with uh, with his wife. Well, you know, he hadn't been on that roof naked. None of this would have happened. No. He comforted her. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault. I did it. If anything, it was my fault. I think David was trying his very best, trying to convince his wife, despite the fact that the child was, was gone. He was going to meet that child again. He said, God has taken our child. Heaven. God loves him. God cares for him. He's with the Lord. Yeah. And God loves us. God cares for us. God's on our side. And David comforted his wife. You know what a woman needs? She needs security. They want a place of their own. They want to know the bills are going to be paid. They want to be reassured everything's going to be okay. Bathsheba just lost her baby. And she knows why it happened. Because of the adultery. Because of the murder. That's guilt. She knows David had her husband killed. That's remorse. And she needs now not condemning words. What she needs now is comforting words. From a man that loved her. And David comforted Bathsheba. I know a man in prison. I'd go visit him. His boys would tell me, go visit my daddy. He didn't want to come to service. He said, I read my Bible, I pray. I get a phone call, and about a year later, he wind up, found hanged in prison. They asked me to do the funeral. I said, well, he never came to church, but I'll tell you one thing. He said, uh, I read my Bible every day, I pray every day. I tried to give him some hope. I tried to give him some comfort. I preached on the love of God. For God so loved the world. I prayed for them boys. And then boys, they still wanted to continue trusting God that he was a loving God. They needed comfort. They didn't even be reminded that their daddy was in prison. Sooner or later, tragedy, trials, tribulations come. It may not happen tomorrow, 
Sooner or later, mark it down. It's going to come. And it may not happen to you. It may be to one of your loved ones. You know what you need to hear? You can still trust God. You need comforting words. Comforting words. You know what you don't need to hear? It's your fault. This is your fault. You're a terrible daddy. You're a terrible mother. You're an awful provider. You're no good. You're not a good son. You're not a good daughter. You're not a good friend. You're not a good Christian. Both go around hurting each other, sticking each other with a knife. They don't need that. They need comfort in words. They need comfort in words. It's going to be all right. God loves you. He's still for you. You can still trust God. After David heard all them words, he still trusted the Lord. The Lord was going to take care of him. David comforted his wife. Too late to go back. Forget about the past. You better go on with the future. Press forward. Bathsheba had another son. David called him Solomon. Solomon means the man of peace because he regarded his birth as a token. He had restored his peace with God. And then I see the strangest part of the verse. And the Lord loved him. Who did he love? Solomon. And all this mess, God says, I don't love that boy. I love that boy. David's an adulterer, murderer, he's been judged by God. And God loves his new son. Makes no sense. How many marriages do you know of that start off first in fornicating, shacking up? husband and wife get saved and then God starts blessing their marriages. How many times have you heard marriages end in divorce and a man's got two kids, one from this wife, one from another wife. She's got three kids, one from this white guy and one from another guy. I mean, you talk about a big mess and then God makes a family. They don't need you to judge them. They need you to be a blessing to them. They need comfort and words. God loves you. God sent His Son to die for you. God wants your family to grow in the knowledge and the love and grace of God. They need comforting words. Comforting words. God's children need comforting words. They need comfort from the Word of God. From those that are close to you, your husband, your wife, your children, your preacher. I remember as a teenager, I hopped on my motorcycle and, and uh, went to my best friend's house. And I was going to run away from home. Mom had to come, talk to me, comfort me, come home. We had a little store. I was working at the age of six, separating Coca-Cola bottles. Empty Coca-Cola bottles at the age of six. I became a teenager. I had to rotate the uh, freezer, rotate the Coke machine, sliding doors, glass doors. One day I got some mad. Everybody else is out there playing, playing baseball and football, and I'm in here working. I was raised to work. It was installed in me. I've, I've installed it in all my children, whether they liked it or not. I made sure they were going to learn to work. I got so mad, I busted that glass window with my fist. 
My dad came over and he just taped up my hand. He didn't have to say one word. He just put that tape on, on my hand. Comfort me. I tell you, you need comfort. Because everybody goes through something. Sooner or later, trouble's coming. Mark it down on your calendar. Sometimes they don't go away. They just linger. You know what you need? You need comforting words. They're destroying our history. They're destroying our law enforcement. Our worship. Our freedom. They're making us wear masks. Hundred and forty four thousand. Let's just get this thing over with. How many people died of cancer? I feel like a Democrat. I'm waiting on my welfare check. You know what you need? You need comforting words. What's more comforting than Jesus is coming back? And he is. Now listen, I'm, I'm pre-millennial all the way. I believe Jesus is going to be in the clouds. He's going to call us out of here. And we're gone. But for you mid trippers, the Lord is not going to leave us comfortless. He's coming. The signs are everywhere. In two weeks, the moon's fixing to turn into blood. It's going to look red. We're going to a uh, paperless society. No more currency, no more coins. The grand experiment, how many people can we make wear this mask? A hundred and forty-four thousand dead. What a great tragedy. Boy, that's terrible. 166,000 overdosed. Just on dope. Eight-year-old girls dying. Getting shot. You need comfort. Comfort in work. Let me ask you a question. This message is short. It's uh, hopefully sweet. Semi for me, the best I can do. I'm not that sweet of a preacher anymore. But I will tell you the truth. What kind of person are you? Do you need comfort? The Lord's coming back. Are you a comfort to others? A blessing to others? Are you the one that hurts people with your words? When's the last time you talked to a loved one? Had somebody in your life that you said claim that you love that needs comfort? Just a call, just a text. Just email. Just to say I love you. I love you. It's a little bit too late to say at the graveyard. Comforting words. People need them all the time. You know what people are going through. You have no idea. They got a big smile on their face. They tell a few jokes. They climb around and inside there are nothing but tears down in their hearts. Are your words comforting? 
or are you just plain mean? I wish I could say every word I've ever said in my life has been covered, but I'd be a liar. As a preacher, sometimes I've got to tell you the truth just like Nathan. I got to tell you the truth. Some of you have been acting like crazies. Going around accusing other preachers because you don't like the way they operate their services. Criticizing him, this person, and criticizing that person. People need comfort nowadays. It's going to get rougher. It's going to get weirder. There's a locust plague. It's getting close. Lord's coming back. I don't even care if you're in sin. Forget about it. Repent. Repent like David did before it's too late. You don't want the preacher to point his little finger in your face and say, Thou art the one. And then you have to be punished by God. It'd be so much easier right now if you just say, It's me. I'm the one that did it. I haven't been a comfort to those that need it. I'm the one that sinned. David lost his baby because he was a hypocrite. Went to church, said amen with his new bride, his new baby. And then he had to comfort his wife because God said the punishment is your child's going to die. You don't want that. Why don't you just get over it? Just tell God the truth. He already knows. He already knows. Repent. Just tell God I'm a, I'm a worthless comforter. I couldn't say the right thing if I wanted to. Sometimes all you got to do there is be there for somebody. Lie if you have to. I'm praying for you. We know you ain't. Lie to him. Comfort. People need it. They need help. They need help. Marriages look good on the outside, but there's fussing and fighting. Children look good. I know a young man. Thinking about suicide, whole life ahead of him. Girls chasing. Got everything in the world. It's not enough. You need Christ. You need your Bible. You need the Holy Ghost. And you need comforting words. Sometimes you need to ask God, Lord, would you please give me some comforting words? And there's times you're going to have to be the one that's going to have to give the comfort. Those few little comforting words. I'd have to say a thing sometimes just being there. You're going to have to be the one. Are you a comfort to others? Or are you a curse? Are you a curse? Nobody wants to be around you. Are you a curse? You don't pray for anybody? Are you a curse? You don't tell somebody you love them? What are you? 
Why don't you look in the mirror and examine your sight? Lord, what kind of person am I? Everybody needs comfort sooner or later. Everybody. Sooner or later. You're going to need comfort. I ain't the only comfort in words I can tell you is what the Bible says. Comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to them clouds. And they could have my quarters and pennies and everything else. They can have all the chains they want. I really have Christ. Would you pray? In my comfort, a blessing, or am I just plain mean and grouchy, hateful, a criticizer, bitter, envious? What kind of person are you? I want to be one that's comforting. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Jesus is on our side. He died for us. He shed his blood. You know, everything's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about a thing. Has the Lord told you what you are? Why don't, why don't you pray and ask? Am I a comfort, a blessing, an encourager? Or am I just a plain old criticizer? It's up to you. People need comfort. They need comfort. The Bible says, In the last days shall I find faith. People aren't watching anymore. People aren't going to church anymore. It's Independence Weekend. We've got to barbecue on Sunday. Lord's come. I advise you to comfort one another. Christians and those that are not Christians need it. Father, let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, uh, tonight. I pray, God, you'd help us to uh, remember that Christ is coming for it to comfort us. And even in sin, Lord, when it's time and someone needs comforting, Lord, we'd be there to be a blessing, not to criticize. Help us, God, to be the one that points them toward Christ, toward His love. Help us be more Christ-like, more comforting to one another. In Jesus' precious holy name, Amen.